Hey, God bless you in the name of Jesus. This is your brother in Christ, Brian, with the Gospel Transformation Ministries, helping you bring God's will here on earth just as it is in heaven. And the way that we do that on this channel is through teachings as well as a lifestyle vlog just like this. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Today's vlog is going to be on worship. Yay! I know that you've been waiting for this for pretty much all week. And so what we are going to get into today is how to actually understand what worship is, not so we can gain head knowledge, but that way we can become true worshipers of God. And the best way I know how to reveal what true worship is, is by revealing to you how to go to the scriptures and understand this particular topic. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Here we are on Blue Letter Bible. This is a free website that you can go to. It's called blueletterbible.org. And so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna just look up the word worship. So we'll type in worship. And I'm looking up in the King James Version of the Bible, and we're gonna hit search. It says that it occurs 108 times in 102 verses in the King James Version. That seems like a lot. Before we go any further, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to Advanced Options, and instead of looking in the whole Bible, we're just gonna look in the New Testament. There we go. So here, the word worship occurs 44 times in 40 verses in the custom selection in the New Testament in the King James Version. What we want to understand first and foremost is that this is the English word worship. But what we want to do really is look at the Greek word because we're looking in the New Testament and get a sense of what that word actually means. Matthew 2 verse 2 says, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Now, for those of you that don't know, this is in the context of the Magi going to find the newborn Jesus. So that way they can present him with gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So we click on the tools button and we have something called interlinear. Click on the interlinear. What it's gonna do is it's actually going to give us the Greek translation of this particular verse. So if we scroll down, now we see the English word on the left hand side, and this is a referencing tool, the Strong's number. So that's going to come into play here in just a moment. So this is what it looks like in the Greek, and then the root word, and then the transliterated word saying here, for instance, is Strong's number 3004. So Lego, not to be confused with Lego, my ego. <laughs> right now, we're going to go back down to our word worship because that's what we want to look up. So we scroll down and we see to worship. So it's a phrase and it's the Greek number 4352. This word worship is this particular Greek word. For this study, let's do this. We're going to go over to John chapter 4. So as I scroll down in the New Testament, here we see the New Testament. Jesus is speaking to that Samaritan woman and saying that true worship worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth. In fact, here it is in John chapter 4 verse 24. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is our verse that we're going to be studying, okay? So John 4 24. So let's go ahead, hover over tools, open the interlinear, and now we scroll down to the word worship. And lo and behold, it is the same Greek word that we looked at in Matthew. Strong's number 4352, and it is a verb, meaning it's an action word. Both instances of that word and that verse are indeed the same word. Now, this is where it's going to get a little bit more in depth. When we click on this Greek word, it's going to give us more information about that particular word. What I'm going to show you is that that it is translated into the King James Version 60 times. But you may be asking, wait a minute, how is it translated 60 times when the word worship was only in the New Testament was only shown to be, what, 44 times or something like that? When you look up the Greek word, you want to understand that it can also be translated in different ways into different words or different phrases. So when we looked up the word worship, we were looking up the English word worship. Now we are actually looking at the Greek word. And because we're looking at this Greek word, we're going to gain a better understanding as we read those verses of what this is 
about. According to this dictionary, it's telling us that it's the biblical usage of it is to kiss the hand to towards one in token of reverence. It also can mean among the Orientals, especially the Persians, to fall upon the knees and touch the ground with the forehead as an expression of profound reverence. In the New Testament, this is the third definition, by kneeling or prostrating to do homage to one or make obeyance. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Obeyance, whether in order to express respect or to make supplication. A, it's used of homage shown to men and beings of superior rank. For an example, to the Jewish high priests, to God, to Christ, to heavenly beings, and even to demons. Strong's definition here of this word proskineo, it comes from the root word of Strong's 4314, which we're not gonna look up right now, but it says, and a probable derivative of 2965, meaning to kiss like a dog licking his master's hand, to fawn or crouch to. So this is telling us is this proskineo is actually a one word that's made up of two particular root words. And when you put them together, it forms the word worship. Here's where it can get a little heady. And this is where we want to be careful with. We have to understand that the Holy Spirit is our teacher. So what we're doing is we're kind of just doing a search just so we can gather references of the occurrence of this particular word in the New Testament. So that way we can go back to those sections of scripture and read those sections of scripture with the Holy Spirit, letting Holy Spirit highlight to you what it is that he wants to reveal. We will stop here bring my kids over to my in-laws. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to head over to Krispy Kreme and get my birthday uh, donuts. I ordered a dozen pumpkin spice and they said, hey man, don't worry about it. It's your birthday. We'll give it to you. So look. Bam and bam. Two boxes of free Krispy Kreme donuts. That's awesome because these things are amazing. So let's get back into this worship thing. So now that we've looked up the English word worship and we've looked up the corresponding Greek word which is proskineo, what we're gonna do then is we're going to read all of those occurrences. Yes, we're going to read it. We are trusting Holy Spirit to open the eyes of our understanding that we might know Jesus, right? So as we're reading these particular verses, we're quietly listening to thoughts and impressions that come to our heart and mind. And sometimes these are in a question form because God is asking us a question or we're asking God a question and you can use who, what, when, where, why, and how questions as you're reading this, those particular texts. When we're reading those particular verses individually, we may want to read the context of those verses, at least 12 verses before, 12 verses after. And what we're looking for is to gain a sense of what this particular word means. And that also includes paying attention to other things that are supporting it. So for instance, in our example verse of John 424, God is spirit and those that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. We have to understand that worship that Jesus is proclaiming here is associated with in spirit and truth. So we want to take note of that. We're going to head back home. All right, just got home, gave my wife the good news about the free donuts. She's over there eating a donut. Here, see. <laughs> but I wanted to mention this about uh, when we're studying. We're, we're not studying a topic or a particular subject to gain head knowledge. We are studying it so we can become it. So when Jesus said that those that worship will worship in spirit and in truth, we want to understand what that actually means so that way we can actually live it. Because again, we want to bring God's will here on earth just as it is in heaven. It's about 4.50. I have to leave here in about a half an hour. Dan Moeller, one of my favorite, if not the favorite preacher, one of my favorite, if not my favorite preacher is in town. He's about an hour away. So I'm going to go visit him and uh, listen to him tonight. It's going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to it. I will continue to add more content here regarding worship and how to study the scriptures concerning worship, but it's probably going to be broken up. Today's vlog was just breaking down looking up the English word worship, then looking at the Greek word that is associated in that verse, and then reading every verse that has that Greek word in it so we can get a sense of it. And as we're reading it, we're getting quiet so we can hear what Holy Spirit has to say. Either it's gonna come as thoughts or impressions of our, in our heart or mind, and it could come in as questions. And you can also ask who, what, when, where, why, and how questions as you're reading the scriptures. Don't forget to read the context about 12 verses before, 12 verses back, just to kind of get a sense of where you're at. Just let Holy Spirit highlight things to you as you're reading those verses, and we'll pick up where we're going to go from here uh, next time. Just parked 
Heading over into the church now. Sounds like they're doing worship. So I'm going to go in and have a good time. Just getting home from seeing Dan Moeller. I didn't record anything tonight because I really just wanted to lock in on what he was saying. The message that he was preaching is, why are we even Christians? And it's not for us. It's for his sake, right? It's for him. I don't know. I'm just kind of processing some things and considering what I've been doing. Have I allowed hurts from others to affect who I am in Christ and expressing that. I really feel like there's something that's gonna click for me. So I love you guys. I will try to button this up as soon as I can and release it for you. Yeah, I guess the question of the day today is, why are you even a Christian? What is the reason? Is it for you to have a better life or is it for Jesus sake? Leave me a comment down below so we can encourage one another. I sure do love you. I'll talk to you guys soon. In the meantime, go and be everything that God says you are because that's the way he knows you. God bless you. Bye. Red light? Yeah. This is not my game mode, but this the game mode that's gonna be easy for my video. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mom. You're on the board. Huh. I have glasses. <laughs> Wait, no, stop recording. <laughs>